I'll start with uh, Funke Okubadejo, who is a director with Actors, uh, just to share with us, you know, um, first of all, tell us what, you know, what part of, you know, the real estate sector do they find most challenging and, uh, and strategies to, to, to mitigate this, these challenges. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Falabi. I think, first of all, I would like to say that, yes, um, I think you actually articulated some of the challenges uh, in the real estate space in Nigeria in particular. Uh, we don't come in on the classic uh, property management or property development where we're looking to do uh, deals or create a company. We're looking to actually partner with uh, developers on ground. And our first project in Nigeria, which we're all familiar with, is with the P uh, Palms project, which we actually partnered with a, uh, a developer who's here, Chairman uh, Taya Musha of Pasienas. So and we've been able to follow that through with a couple other projects uh, in Nigeria as well as in uh, Accra, and we're quite pleased to that. I think the other thing on access to capital is also the fact that there isn't really the debt capital. With double-digit interest, uh, interest rates, uh, development yields at um, maybe 10 to 12 percent max, how do you finance with 22 percent interest rate? It's really not doable. So it's the ability to bring to bear um, foreign currency debt into the projects, long-term debt which is well structured and I think that's where we've been able to do that. Another key uh, challenge we've, we found was the fact that there really hasn't been the development management skills. Uh, you know, we've had so many years without development of the skill of nature of the projects we are looking to do. And what we've been able to do actually now in the markets we are in, focused in Sub-Saharan Africa, is a development platform. We've actually formed a company which helps us to be able to manage uh, the development from concept to actually um, uh, completion and even management of, of, of the projects, which brings to bear both, um, I'll say, local skills, uh, knowledgeable, uh, local knowledge of how to actually operate, um, get permits uh, locally, uh, up to uh, manage the construction, uh, and uh, also bringing in uh, their uh, international expertise. So we think we've actually got that right. We have a company in West Africa called Loras Development Partners. We have a similar one also in East Africa, and, and that's what we do. I think one challenge that um, we have that is quite unique to us as private equity practitioners is the one of exit and liquidity of our investments. So we are creating uh, large-scale projects, and we're looking to actually exit that. And the key thing is, you know, how do we do that? Uh, we came in uh, in early 2000 when there really there was no visibility on how this would be achieved. So what we believed was, if we build it, you know, we'll get the tenants. If we got the tenants, we'll have the cash flows. If you have the cash flows, the investors will be interested. You're looking to give investors who want a de-risk project they see uh, an investment that can hedge that can be that hedges properly against inflation, and you have steady cash flows. And being able to do that, I think we've uh, uh, successfully exited two projects in West Africa. First one to a partner who was able to raise the finance. Second one we've been able to sell to um, uh, asset managers uh, who are in Southern Africa looking up north. And we see an increasing trend that they will be coming and be interested in projects in this market. And I think the one that really interests us most to actually explore is how do you actually dip in the capital market locally such that you can actually have um, you know, pension funds getting um, access to uh, real estate. You actually have $18 billion with very little um, exposure to um, real estate, which is a traditional place where pension players are actually quite uh, big players. Um, I think there's more work that needs to be done on looking at how do we deepen the potential for real estate, in particular working on legislations that have to work with real estate investment trust. And um, I think there's a lot of um, interest in that. We've had discussions with SEC, we've had some to understand what we can do working with the Nigerian Stock Exchange. I think that there are parts of all of that in place. The question is how the coordination in between, particularly in terms of making uh, the REITs a pass-through vehicle, which is very important, particularly for the pension funds that would want to get exposure in, uh, into the sector. I, mean, um, I think there are other things that I'll, I'm sure people will touch on and I wouldn't spend too much time uh, talking about that for now. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you very much, Funke. Um, you mentioned some very interesting points. Um, obviously, exit is key to you um, as a private equity investor, and you've also mentioned um, um, how you manage execution risk by, by setting up a vehicle uh, that does this. We'll, we'll come back and, and talk a bit more about that in a moment. Um, we'll just move on uh, to... Uh, get a developer's perspective uh, from Persianus. Uh, we're honored to have the chairman here, uh, Taya Mouchon, and uh, Mike Williams, a, a director in Persianus, and they'll be sharing with us their experiences and the most challenging aspect of, you know, the, the, tr the, the transactions and the projects they've worked on and how they worked around this and ideas around how, you know, uh, we can help alleviate some of these uh, challenges. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for having me. Um, first of all, I would like to say the one has evolved from just having a passion on um, real estate to now turning it into a business. And I think I have personally lived it, you know, for the past maybe 10, um, 12 years. The gentleman on my uh, left used to work for Actis and I used to negotiate with him on the buyout, you know, and it cost me a lot of money, but I realized I needed him and I went back to him to say, please, come and help me out with some of these challenges. He's now seeing the other part of the, on the other side of the table rather than sitting on the equity part, you know. I'll tell you something, I, um, years ago, about uh, 19, in 2004, I decided I wanted to build a shopping center. And um, I was already building apartments and things like that, so I, I, I said I wanted to go a level up to build a commercial build. And um, I had a drawing. Can you hear me? I, I had a drawing and um, I went to a bank here. I won't mention the bank's name and um, the MD told me, Chairman, what do you want to do? Who is going to take this big space here? You know, is it going to be for all these prayer guys praying or something like that? I said, of course, somebody's going to take it. He said, no, you must be joking. No, I can't finance this. Get out of here. You know, nobody's going to take this large space. And it all, you know, I, 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 I kind of um, decided to stay on, you know, and, um, you know, and stay in there. I borrowed money at about 20% uh, from 20, 24%. Um, construction was, construction um, uh, cost was too high. Um, uh, the, uh, everything I went through was just a nightmare in short. At the end of the day, but one thing that is extremely, and we're still going through it, one thing that is extremely great about Nigeria is that the market is there in the first place. You know, the market is there and the market is extremely huge. You know, today we built a mall in Enugu. When I was going to Enugu also, people said, what's going on in Enugu? Is there anything in Enugu? I said, of course, there are human beings that live there. Uh, today, um, Enugu is now the third best shop for um, ShopRite right now. You know, in Lagos, they do about, in Ikeja, they do about one, if I can, I can freely tell you, they have accounts, 120 million a day, a uh, week, sorry, or a month. And in uh, Palms, they do about 90 million naira a month. And in um, Inugun, they do about 75 million. They themselves cannot believe it. But yet, all this cannot be sustainable if we don't find a way to make real estate development easier to do, in my own opinion. The challenges are too much. It starts from banks, from construction, like she, she, um, he, she has said. And also, there's no exit, in my own opinion, clear for even the developer, you know, and that's why I brought Mike that he has experience with Actis Standard Bank and he's worked in South Africa. Is that in South Africa in cases or in America, you can be a developer, you could develop, you know, and you could, I, I hate using the word, flip it, or you could sell it, you know, to somebody and make your profit and it goes, you know. But in Nigeria, you can't, any big, you, you can't even, there's no, there's no real market for it. The, um, you know, I was, unfortunately, he's left now, the stock exchange and the pen, pen con, the, the, the regulations to me, it's not very clear to me how I can, you know, I can really exit some of, you know, some of the value that is locked in there. I always also tell people, for example, I mean, look at the Central Bank of Nigeria. I have this argument with them all the time, and I say to them, you've 
putting intervention funds in so many areas of our economy, aviation, <coughs> power, I don't know what, I don't know what, trillions, you know. What effect has it had in even employing people? Nothing. You know, sometimes I tell people that because the demand of rail, the, the, the demand, the, 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 mark, the demand area is quite high. I don't need any help from you. Just what I need from you is to actually, for mortgages, subsidize it. Help us out. I was telling the governor of Central Bank, he was saying, Tyron needs help from me. I said, no, I don't need help from you, you know. But let's have a situation where mortgages are like, you know, single digits. In that case, what would automatically happen? Developers will go in there, build more things. Contractors will employ people, and the rest of it, all that does not exist in this country right now, you know. And there's nothing, no industry you want to do that real estate or infrastructure in one form or the other does not come in. This is, this is my, you know, I don't know how we can solve all these issues, you know, but the challenges are quite, you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, they, they're, just, they're, they're just enormous. And also, I believe that because the market is so big, everybody's concentrating on Lagos. This is very essential or, you know, on, on South Africa. There's 140 million people spread around this country. You know, they're human beings that need houses, that need sports recreation, that need to shop, that need everything. You need to build block and mortar for them. And you need to be able to make to find a way, you know, to, to, to make it work. I'll give you an example. Right now in our, in, in, in our own company, I've decided I'm not giving contracts out to any contractor anymore, you know, like, um, uh, or especially outside of Lagos, like Kappa and Abato, this, because their prices to me are too high, you know. The other day, ShopRite came to me and said to me, oh, we, we, we now imported our coal rooms ourselves, you know. From South Africa, the coal room is costing 75,000 naira, 12. In Nigeria, when they give me a price, it's 55 million naira. It doesn't make any sense, you know? So I've now decided that, look, the way to do, to challenge this thing, we've employed con con construction managers and the rest, is to say, let's build our wet works ourselves, you know, we'll build the wet, wet works. The challenges with banks, banks don't like it, you know, but we, that's the only way, because I have to make room for people to bring in the market, for people in Enugu, in Ekiti, in Anambra, wherever, to be able to also enjoy what you us. And you know, we, we've got to try and find a way to build it and, and I have to do my own procurement myself and bring it in and fit everything. So it, it, that's just a way of trying to fight away the, the, the construction costs. But I'll let Michael, I think, you know, I think I've spoken enough. I'll let Michael give us, you know, his own, he's now on the other side. So that's why I brought him today. I said, look, you've been on the other side. When we're negotiating and you were saying this, you must do this, you must do that. Now you are seeing this side you know, uh, of the table. So you will now be able to compare both together. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman, for your very insightful um, analysis. I mean, what, what we hear from you is that um, there have to be policies in place to stimulate demand so that as a developer, when you develop these properties, there's offtake for it. And you also mentioned a point about construction costs as well, locally being too high. And uh, on clear regulations of SEC and, and PENCOM in, in, in helping um, the demand side. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we'll, we'll just hear from, from Mike now, who formerly was wearing the hat of a, a financier, and now you're wearing the hat of a developer. So we're very interested to hear your perspective on this. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, or good afternoon, everyone. And it, it does make a, a difference um, working with Tyre and being at the coalface um, because I had to go and dig for my suit this morning because our sleeves are normally rolled up and we, you know, have to You're do gonna everything. You've got shots, it will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Anyway, so perhaps the, for, for me to just give you an idea of the challenges and, and to come back to that is is perhaps to articulate how we've decided to, to deal with a lot of the, the challenges and how we've restructured or how we're busy structuring Persianus as a business, which we hope to list one day. So listening to the previous panel, 
discussion on IFRS, corporate governance, and all these issues, we've realized we have to do that as a business. So we are now moving towards being IFRS compliant, IFC compliant in terms of their performance standards. And the main reason for that is that we then are able to attract investment. People then want to invest in, in us because we've got the right infrastructure in place. So we've taken on that, that challenge and that's, that's one um, very important one for us. And it is, it's actually quite difficult to, to match real estate to all the corporate governance and requirements of the IFRS and all your, your banking requirements when you raise money and your investor requirements and their exit requirements and the um, issues around um, deal flow. Projects take time, it costs money. If time is money, it's, 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 it's straightforward to us. Every month the interest bill during construction ticks over. We, we watch it, it's like a slot machine. And the longer it, construction takes, the more expensive our projects, projects are. On the other side of the equation, we have tenants who are constantly telling us our rents are too high. We can't do business. Please give us a reprieve. And we have to acknowledge that because if they don't do well and trade, we don't have the critical mass in our shopping centers to be able to pay the banks and ultimately pay returns to, to our investors. So we've actually taken a, 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 a different view. We're a hands-on business, very hands-on. And we deal directly with our issues now, as opposed to being one step removed. With, with land, we deal directly with the, the states and the various authorities, so we can go through a, a, a good solid process with them. When it comes to construction, time is the biggest issue for us, quality is a big issue, so we are now procuring. We are going to set up within our business um, construction professionals because we haven't had good results from working with local contractors. And I say that with the deepest of respect to our construction colleagues, but we land up being over budget, over time, and the quality is just not what it should be. And if we're going to list companies in Nigeria, we really do need investment-grade assets. And that's what Persianus is, is striving for now. So we have to figure out a way to bring our construction costs down. So when we look at viabilities now, we don't just add an in inflation number based on what somebody's developed in the past. We're actually striving real hard to bring it down substantially so that we can pass that on to tenants Firstly, who are the people who pay the rent? And secondly, so that we can afford the expensive finance that we have from our various banks. And on that note as well, the financiers currently, there are a lot of financiers in the market who provide finance to developers like us, but I do feel that, that, that there's still a misalignment between their objectives, and yes, there is the will, so again, my, my, my respect to colleagues in the financial services industry, but for us, five-year money at a 20% interest rate doesn't work. Real estate is long-term. It's got to be 10-year plus money and interest rates need to be single digits for us to really be able to, to, to achieve what we want to. So those costs ultimately are passed on and we're at a point now in our business where we have to produce returns as I'm sure um, actors would do where we can only invest so much. And if returns do not match up to what we've promised investors, we don't invest. So the market loses out, I feel, where there are good opportunities because of these, these high costs. And lastly, I think of a critical part of the market in Nigeria is access to the secondary capital markets. I think in other markets I've seen, as soon as the stock exchanges open up and they become a buyer, let's just use, put, put, it, put it that way, they start that, that, that spurns a trading market, so people want to start buying and selling their properties as whole assets. So there's somebody out there who can afford to buy a shopping center or three shopping centers in one go. And they bring with them all the compliance issues and investment grade, let's say. 
style analysis. So they're not going to just pay an emotional price or a low price. It's going to pay, they're going to pay the right price, which is what investors want. And that starts setting price levels in the market, which we're after. And that makes a huge difference to, to cost of finance, to construction, etc. And it puts a big chunk of money into the market. So from our point of view, we're striving to list Persianus. And we're going to take a slightly different view is that we're actually going to sit down with the regulator shortly and, and put in an application. We, we've decided to, to give it a go. And you know, that way, almost as a pilot, for, pilot project, to sort of tackle the issues head on yeah, to list. Excellent. Um, thanks a lot, Mike, uh, for sharing your wealth of uh, experience on, on the two sides of the divide as formerly uh, a financier of these deals and, and now more recently and currently um, a developer. Thanks. Um, we'll hear now from Jimmy Benton, who is the company secretary of uh, LSDPC, uh, Lagos State Development and Property Corporation, and he'll be sharing with us uh, their strategies to um, reducing the housing deficit, which is estimated somewhere between 15 to uh, 20 million units. Um, after Jimmy, we'll be hearing from um, the permanent secretary, uh, Hakim Muriel Kuala, who will be giving us uh, the regulator's perspective. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to be giving uh, developers Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be giving a developer's perspective uh, to the topic at hand. But before I do that, I need to explain the value that we need to unlock. Uh, today, it is stated that Nigeria has a housing deficit of 17 million. And I'm going to narrow it down to Lagos. Lagos has a housing deficit of about, of about 5 million. So it means that all things being equal, if we need to 